Hello, welcome to Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. I'm Sandra Long Weaver, and I'm the editorial director for the Tennessee Tribune. And today, we are privileged to have with us our guest, John F. Baker Jr., who has written a book about his family history, The Washingtons at Wessington Plantation. The book was originally published in 2009, but he has continued uh, to build on it. And just recently, an exhibit at the Tennessee State Museum closed, uh, featuring life uh, among slaves at the plantation. But Mr. Baker has spent over 30 years researching his family's history. Uh, and it all led back to the Wessington Plantation in Robertson County. So, Mr. Baker, tell us a little bit about how you got started. Okay, well, I got started when I was in the seventh grade. We used a social studies textbook called Your Tennessee, mm -hmm. and I spotted a photograph of four African Americans only entitled Black Tennesseans. And I later learned from my maternal grandmother that two of them were her grandparents, Emmanuel and Henny Washington, who had been enslaved on Wessington Plantation. Uh, Wessington was founded by Joseph Washington, a distant cousin of President George Washington, in 1796. And uh, I spent over 30 years doing genealogical research on all the families on the plantation, not only my family. Uh, in 1860, there were 274 African Americans enslaved on the plantation, which was the largest uh, number of slaves in the state of Tennessee. It was also the largest tobacco plantation uh, in America. In, in America? The, in America. At that point? Wow. Yes, it was 13,000 acres. And uh, they were also the second largest producer of dark fire tobacco in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. Shortly before the Civil War. Okay, so and that so that was in 1860. Right. So as you did the research, you you became more and more a, addicted, yes, so to that's speak, a good word. <laughs> <laughs> to really finding out more. Yes. Um, uh, in addition to interviewing my own family members, I interviewed a lot of seniors mm -hmm. ranging in age from 80 to 107 years old, who were children or grandchildren of former slaves there. And when I heard their stories, I became as interested in their family history as I did my own. Mm -hmm. So over the course of 30 years, I traced each one of those families. Oh, well. So now, did you start uh, interviewing family members when you were in still in junior high and, and high school? Yes, I started as soon as I found out that the uh, couple in my social studies textbook was my great-great-grandparents. I started from then on and I've been doing research ever since. Oh, wow. Okay. So the stories that you have then are all pretty much in this book and how far back is most of them, most, most of them mm -hmm. uh, are in in this book? And right. there's also a documentary. Uh, uh, yes, NPT did a documentary called uh, Wessington Plantation, A Family's Road to Freedom, which highlights some of the individuals who were enslaved at Wessington. They also feature some of the information that's in the uh, Slaves and Slaveholders exhibit of Wessington Plantation at the Tennessee State Museum, which closed August 31st. Right. So when you were doing the research, did you ever hit dead ends and wonder, uh, well, I went, I toured it actually twice, and um, recently you led the tour, and one of the things that I was interested in, there were a couple of family members, I believe, who ran away. They would continue to run away. Right. And can you tell us a little bit about their stories and, and what happened? Okay, uh, from 1796 to 1865, only two slaves were sold from the plantation, so their family stayed intact. So that made it somewhat easier to uh, trace descendants and their ancestry as well. Uh, one individual who ran away four times before the Washingtons decided to sell him was a slave named Davy, and he was ultimately sold in 1854 in New Orleans. And after emancipation, he came back to Tennessee where three of his brothers were still on the plantation. He got with them, they moved to Cheatham County, Tennessee, and from there to Davidson County, Tennessee, uh, here in Nashville. And some of their descendants still remain here. Oh, they are still here? Yes. Oh, wow. And so in, in doing this story, I th um, doing the research, and I think uh, during one of the tours, you also found some cousins or distant cousins and you've met other family members? Yes, I've done a family tree uh, starting with uh, my great 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 grandparents. Is that going five? Back, five great. <laughs> okay. Going back to 1760 mm -hmm. and I brought this wow. family tree down to the present time mm -hmm. and so there's over 1,000 descendants on this family tree. So a lot of visitors they went to the museum found their names on the family tree and so they left word at the museum that I was their relative and to contact them and some of them happened to be there at the same time I was. Oh, wow. So I met some from New Jersey, some from Chicago, some from Cleveland, 
uh, all over the place. So uh -huh. I was glad to welcome them in the family, so to speak. Oh, great. So is there a, a family reunion planned? or? Well, our, our Washington family has held a family reunion for probably 60 or 70 years wow. each year. So mm -hmm. we've always uh, done that. But uh, this year, the White Washingtons toured the exhibit and they held their first family reunion and I gave them a tour of Westington Plantation and it was about 55, 60 of them. Oh, really? They came to it. And what was their reaction? Uh, when they, they saw the connection. They were amazed at all the information that I'd gathered up over a 30 year period because it was, you know, our families are intertwined. So when I traced my family and all the other slave families, of course, I had to trace uh, theirs as well. So really, I know more about their family than history. they do too as well. <laughs> so some of them contact me uh, today and ask about their family history as well. Oh, wow. And some of the other slave descendants too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're continuing then to lecture about the families and continuing to trace family history. Is I, I asked you a little bit uh, earlier, was this the largest family tree of, among African American families that you know of? Okay, I've traced on uh, every family from the plantation, so I have a family tree for each one of them. The Terry family, for example, I did their family tree for a reunion that they have every other year. And they have over 1,800 uh, direct descendants on their family tree. Wow. And I think it spans 14 generations. Wow. And then the Gardner family, that's the largest uh, family in our county, in Robertson County, that's carrying the same, African Americans carrying the same surname. Mm -hmm. And I did a family tree for them. They had a family reunion uh, the third week in August. And they've been having a family reunion every year since 1935. So wow. as part of that reunion this year, I took them to the uh, plantation and gave them a tour of the exhibit. Is the plantation open for public visitation or is it? Uh, no, the uh, plantation is a private home. Uh, in 1983, the Washington family sold it to Glenn and Donna Robertson and they currently own it. Okay, so, um, so it's not open? It's not open to the public. Okay. Now, how many families, uh, you said you traced, you've traced other families. How many families were there on the plantation? Um, well, in 18... I know you said 274 slaves were there but how many, how many? there were um, in 1860 there were um, 30 Family. families on the plantation and some of those were interconnected with the white Washington family or, or Not interconnected uh, like some of them married into each other's families oh, like say I for see. us the slaves that were there first mm -hmm. in the earliest years then somebody came say later on then some of their relatives married into each other's families I see yeah. okay and one of the um, interesting stories I remember uh, was uh, told in a video by a young girl named Jenny. Was it Jenny who was yes. 10 years old? And she talked about walking three and a half months. Can you tell yes. us a little bit uh, about Jenny that? Jenny was my great, great, great grandmother, and she was born in 1792 in Sussex County, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was owned by Colonel Michael Blow, and he owned a large plantation of about 50 slaves. And he passed away in 1799. And 15 of our family members went to his son, Makaja Blow. And in two years, he started having financial difficulties and he mortgaged the land that he had inherited. And he sold my great, great, great grandmother, Jenny, and her sister, Sarah, to Joseph Washington. And he brought them from Virginia to Tennessee and they passed down to their direct descendants that they walked every step of the way. And this would have taken about three and a half months. Wow. And just little girls. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And through all types of weather. Right. Oh, my goodness. So the exhibit has closed, but so what happens now? What is, what's okay, next um, for you? There are plans for the exhibit to travel starting in the spring, and I think uh, there's enough museums that's shown interest mm -hmm. to keep this going for about three years. Uh, first is coming to Robertson County, which is uh, my home. Great. Uh, it's going from there to Henning, Tennessee, the home of uh, Alex Haley, oh. and several other places throughout the state, and mm -hmm. some museums out out of the state mm -hmm. have also requested it. Great. All right. So I've been giving lectures to school groups, church groups, uh, several universities, uh, Vanderbilt, David Lipscomb, Austin P. have contacted me about uh, doing presentations mm -hmm. for their students and the public. Oh, that's wonderful. So, and what would you tell, one of the things that really struck me was that you started in the seventh yeah. grade and the textbook is, you know, what caught your eye and then you found out that you were related. Um, and you know that young people now you, there was this flurry of activity when uh, Alex Haley was alive right. and Roots came out and everybody wanted to find out more about their genealogy but I see it's 
I think you're keeping it alive, so to speak. But what what would you say to young people today who may have an interest in their family history? How should them, they go about it? Okay, I tell them first to talk to older family members because they can provide a lot of things that you can't find in records. And many of the children today know personally their great grandparents. Some of them even know their great great grandparents. So it's a lot easier for them mm -hmm. than, than it was when I started. Also, they have use of the internet, which uh, I didn't. I had to go to all these libraries and archives and go through rolls of microfilm and some of the stuff you can get on Ancestry.com now and do the research from home to a certain extent. Then when you get back beyond sla back to slavery, then you'd have to go in some of these archives and then mm -hmm. the uh, research is more extensive then. And should they write it down? Should they video it? I would suggest that they write it down and video it. Oh. Okay. So, and what what kinds of questions do you suggest that they start with asking? Um, uh, ask their older direct relatives? questions. Most of the time, I would suggest to have questions already prepared before you go. Okay. To answer the questions that you might have, then let them talk, and then they will probably give you additional things, and these will also lead to clues to unlock other doors to your past. Okay. All right. That sounds good. And what about um, kind of going back? When the exhibit was coming together and mm -hmm. you're working with the curator at the Tennessee Museum, what was one of the most striking things that you've learned over the 30 years uh, that you've done the research? Okay. I'm often asked that why as a 13-year-old, what kept me going doing mm -hmm. all this research? Uh, the Washington family deposited all their records in the Tennessee State Library and Archives in the 1960s. This is over 11,000 documents on 69 rolls of microfilm. And I've gone through all these things many, many times. Wow. The second plantation owner, George A. Washington, traveled a lot as his father was elderly. Mm -hmm. So he would go to New Orleans to sell the plantation crops. He would go to Virginia and Maryland to purchase slaves, and he would go to New York to invest in the stock market. So while he was away, his mother, his father, the plantation overseer, and, and his wife would write him letters, what's going on on the plantation, which slave ran away, uh, who had a baby, who died, the uh, Native Americans coming up to the big house to get food and water before they were driven out on the Trail of Tears, him uh, seeing slave traders take 150 men down south uh, to sell, all types of information, especially during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So there's enough information that I feel like I know many of these people personally. But uh, one of the things that struck me the most I heard a lot of things that I was never taught in school about our ancestors that some of these individuals were going to school when they were 40 and 50 years old because this was illegal when they were slaves. Wow. They had to pay a dollar per month per child to send their kids to school. Some of these people were making 50 cents a day and they realized that education was the key to them to better themselves. So they made the sacrifice to send their children. They started their own businesses. They started schools. Some of them were, were teachers. Some of them even purchased some of the land that they were formerly enslaved on, some of them enlisted in the so after the civil after war, the civil war, some of them bought to... parts of the plantation and, and land in the surrounding area. Uh, also, some of the men from the plantation enlisted in the Union Army and fought for their freedom. So I'd never heard any of these things. So that fascinated me mm -hmm. and kept me doing the research. Wow, it it is fascinating, mm -hmm. and I certainly admire all the work uh, that you put into it. Um, our guest today has been John Baker. And uh, again, he's written The Washingtons of Wessington Plantation. You can purchase the book uh, on his website. And it's also it's on sale at the Tennessee Museum. And also at the museum is a catalog of all the um, information that was in the exhibit. Right. And um, there's also the video that can be purchased there. So thank you. Thank you for inviting Mr. Baker, I appreciate it. Thanks. All right.